There's a carp. There's a carp. Ooh, there's a carp. Spring has well and truly sprung. What a stunning day. Spring is definitely here. That means fish are on the move. Fish are starting to feed. We're hoping to catch loads of fish in the margins today. It's all about carp. Let's hope that the fish are feeding like these doves are. We've got them all around, <laughs> all around us. As you can see, we've got our gear set up already. We're raring to go. We're, we are at the beautiful Yoke Hill Fishery. The water level has been dropped on this particular lake and it gives us an ideal opportunity whilst we're catching a few fish to have a look around and just look at those little sort of hidey holes where those fish love to, love to sit. The lake bed on these venues is not always as featureless and as flat as you expect it to be. So it will be a really interesting walk around today. But the first things first is to get down on the peg and let's talk about catching some fish in the margins. Welcome to the Figure of Eight Lake at Yoak Hill Farm. Now, there's a reason, a very good reason that I am sat on this particular lake on this particular peg. When I first arrived at the fishery this morning, as I always do when I've got a choice of peg, I've had a walk around the venue. Now, when the sun's out, carp are absolutely rubbish at playing hide and seek. They always give themselves away. Now, they love to rise up in the water column. They love to bask just below the surface. And with a nice gentle wind blowing down this end of the lake, plus the fact the sun being out, a little bit of shelter maybe from the island, a couple of overhanging trees, just down from my fishing position, it was obvious that's where the fish wanted to be. So it made total sense for me to sit on this particular peg and sort of capitalize on those fish that are sitting there out of the way. When I got here, there was fish underneath the surface. You, you could just clearly see them. It was so obvious to me that this was the place to, the place to sit on this particular lake. Now, my plan of attack today, I was just gonna come here and just fish, you know, standard snake lake style session, get a feel for my fishing going into the springtime. But with the amount of fish moving around and the amount of fish that are, that are sort of like sitting in the edge, Plus coupled with the fact that this lake has recently been drained, you can probably see that the, the water level is maybe 18 inch, two feet down. There's obviously some work going on on one of the other lakes and they've, they've maybe stole a little bit of water out of this lake to start filling one of the lakes next door. I just feel that we're gonna catch loads of fish in the margins today. Obviously springtime, margins, it sort of goes hand in hand. Those fish sort of start visiting the margins more and more regularly. They start looking for food. They start wanting to pack a little bit of weight on ready for, ready for spawning time. So today is gonna to be all about margin fishing. I've had a really, really good plumb up down, down my right hand side. Obviously I wanna to go towards those fish. I don't wanna go away from those fish. I'm gonna to fish towards those fish that I've seen. So that means fishing to my right. I've had a really good plumb around and I found like something that's quite interesting really. Like I say, because the water level is, is well down on this lake, it's made the margin, it's moved the margin out from the bank. Now, during the heat, the height of summer, when those fish are really aggressively feeding in the edge, I'd probably be thinking about fishing in 12 or 18 inches of water. I know that those fish would be comfortable feeding in that really shallow water. But I just feel that today, the fish are gonna be a little bit further out. And the fish that I can see milling around on the surface, they are generally sort of, two meters away from the from the bank and because they've not got that extra water over their heads they obviously feel comfortable in that in that area so i've got the plummet on a nice heavy plummet i've used a 30 gram plummet and this is the depth that i've found so we're talking there around two feet probably a little bit more than two feet i'm going to say two foot four something like that two and a quarter feet and I think that's gonna be the ideal depth. What I didn't want to do is start fishing in sort of like 12 or 18 inches of water. That might happen later on in the session, depending if we get loads of line bites and things like that. But to start with, I wanna start in two and a half feet of water. That is maybe about two meters from the bank. Isn't it strange how we use, as English anglers, we use imperial and metric measurements in the, in the same sentence. But two and a half, two, two feet of depth, two meters from the, from the bank. And this rig, this particular rig, has got a Malman Rube, one of my favorite floats, 
slightly longer stem than I would use in shallow water. It's got a two mil hollow bristle. I've set it up on 016 midi low vis main line. And then we've got just a string of number nines, four or five number nines, just above a four inch hook length. The hook length's 014, we've got a size 16 hook on there. And so for me, sort of like a classic carp fishing margin rig. The elastic, yellow reactor core, again, we're not taking any prisons today. I expect the fish that we're targeting, the, the ones I can see under the surface anyway, they're, have, they're probably like three to six pounds, something like that. So we want to want to use proper gear and make sure we land every single one. Now, my other rig is slightly different. This is the rig that I would use if I was fishing in that really shallow water. So I've got my float. It's a little midi margin style float, really stumpy little body, slightly thicker bristle because I imagine that in that shallow water, obviously there's a bit more movement with the fish swimming around, fin movement, things like that. So it's a slightly thicker bristle. We've got fiberglass stem, stem for strength. And then we've got, again, number nines, but they're bulked this time just above the four inch hook length. And that is because we need to hold the bait still. In that shallow water, there's gonna be a lot of movement from fish, those big fish in that shallow water, and we need to hold the bait still. So if the fish do want to come into that shallow water, that's the rig we'll use. But I think that will stay on the subs bench today. I think we're going to be using that rig for, for slightly deeper water. Now, bait-wise, I've tried to keep it as simple as, as simple as I can. I've never really fished this lake before, especially not in a competition. So we're, we're sucking it and seeing, really. We're, we're seeing what happens as the day progresses. My main bait, though, that I think I'm going to be feeding are these. Now, anyone that's watched my videos recently will know that I've sort of fell in love with these pellets once again, these are the Swim Stim 3 mils. They're a beautiful pellet. They soak up absolutely fantastic. These are just the natural version. And by putting a few in one of these EVA cases, adding some water to the, the pellets, giving it a good shake and then leaving it for maybe an hour and a half, two hours or so, you've got pellets that are soaked all the way through. They're absolutely beautiful. And these, I think, are going to be my feed. I didn't really want to use micro pellets because I think in two and a half, three foot of water, they're going to be scattered all over the place. So I think those slightly bigger, slightly heavier pellets are just going to sit there a little bit better. And obviously we're, we're, we're targeting decent sized fish. So a slightly bigger pellet is going to work. Then other baits, got with, I've got with me a tin of corn. And also I've got some of Willy Worms, finest dead regs. Really easy. I mean, dead red maggots, whether you've got some leftover from a session and you've just tied them in a bag and chucked them in the freezer yourself, or, you know, like me, I, I use willy worms and just get some sent to me. So convenient, chuck them in the freezer. When you get a beautiful day like this, you just open a bag, chuck them in some water and they're ready to go, you know. Makes fishing so convenient. I'm raring to go. That's the rigs, that's the swim talked about. I think what I'm gonna do is start off by feeding just a few pellets in my margin, maybe with a little bit of corn and we'll see if we can get a bite on a grain of corn. So folks, it's fishing time. Now, to kick off the swim, I'm just gonna use the big pot. Doesn't mean I have to fill it up to the brim. We're not talking about summer margin fishing yet. All I'm gonna do is just scatter in a few pellets, a few of those three mil pellets. I'm not putting a load in. It's probably, I don't know, 30 or 40 pellets there. We can put a few pellets in. And we're talking, I'm just gonna put in sort of like five or six grains of corn. Now you might say, why aren't you using the little pole mounted pot, the little gripper pot? Now those of you that know me and watch any of my videos will know that sometimes I fish, I fish a little bit too fast if I'm honest and I need to just calm down occasionally and this calms me down. So it just means that everything's slowed down because if I was using that little pole mounted pot, I end up presenting my bait a little bit too fast into the swim. And by that, I mean, I want my loose feed to actually get to the bottom and then I present my bait on top of the loose feed that's on the bottom. That's where I'm gonna catch my fish. Sometimes when I'm using a little pole mounted pot, I put my bait in and we all do it. You're itching to get your hook bait in over the top of that, over the top of that feed. And quite often 
that feed hasn't even reached the bottom yet. You get line bites, you miss bites, you get into a bit of a mess, and this just helps slow the whole process down. So by feeding that bait with the big pot, it takes a little bit longer, but it slows me down. And that means that now I know that bait is all on the bottom. And when I go out with my hook bait, we should be fishing over some bait. Now my bait, my starting hook bait is going to be just a grain of corn. Now I've just nicked on a, a grain of corn there through the through the rounded end, the tough, tough end. Hopefully that means that it will stay on nicely when I'm shipping out. I can see the odd fish, you know, milling amongst this little bit of surface scum. I'm hoping that they're not just fish down this end of the lake having a rest. I'm hoping that they'll have a bit of, a bit of food. This is my first drop in. It's quite a bit of, we've caught the only reed in the lake, but we'll drop that in again. It's quite a bit of scum on the water surface here. So that's what carp like. I'm going to really concentrate when I put, present this bait into the water. And what I want to do is just hold it probably six inch off the bottom, then we're going to lower it in, just that last six inch. Got to make sure that we're fishing properly, and that was just over a, a bit of grass. Like I say, it's springtime, so there's a lot of uh, work going on, a lot of commercial fisheries, there's a lot of grass cutting going on. You might be able to hear the mower in the background. And everyone's in a in a rush to get to get these places ready for for the warmer months. Let's lower that in. Right, so that's fishing now. I'm happy with that. Let's hope we get a bite sooner rather than later. I'm fishing 11 meters down the bank today, and that's for good reason. Now. We're not talking about summer margin fishing here. We're not talking about those fish that are feeding like mad three meters away from our fishing position. We're not talking about catching 200, 300 pound weights. We're talking about catching those big wary fish that are just coming out of their sort of like winter sleep, their winter hibernation, and they want a little, well, they want a little bit of bait, but they're still very, very wary of anglers. So we need to fish quite a way away from our fishing position to, to fool those fish. Now, even though I'm fishing a long way down the bank, you might notice that it's all about setting a trap for me. I've got a really short line between pole tip and float. That keeps my float really still. It gives me ultra control over the float. Now, a lot of people might think, you're fishing in shallow water, Rob. Why have you got such a short line? Because surely the pole tip over the float is gonna spook any fish that are in your swim. Now, I'm a big believer that if I can keep my pole tip nice and still, you might notice as well that I've got one of the ghost top kits on, a nice white top kit, which just cuts down on the silhouette against the sky. I think if I can keep my pole nice and still with that short line, not only am I keeping my float absolutely perfectly still and setting that perfect trap, but I'm not spooking any fish. It's when I start waving the pole over the swim, which is gonna cause problems. So what I'm looking to do is to feed my bait in a really tight area with the pole pot and then present my hook bait bang over the top. My cupping kit is cut to the same length as my top kit, so I know that I'm fishing exactly. And you know, if you've not done that, that's something that you need to do. You, you need to think about being ultra precise with your fishing. Whenever we've gone out on you know, group coaching sessions or whenever I've took other anglers out, it's one of the things that they just sometimes struggle with, how accurate you can be when you're fishing a pole. So by cutting everything back, all your top kits back to the same length, you know that you're fishing as accurately as you can be and you're in total control. Float nicely dotted down. We don't want loads of float sticking out. We're looking for that little sharp movement on the float. We can just lift into the fish, hopefully. I mean, if we don't catch anything feeding the pellets and corn, that's when we'll probably revert to, to feeding maggots. I think maggots have they've got their own unique attraction to them that maybe corn hasn't got. So 
we're going to spend at least the early part of the session fishing corn and then revert to maggots if we need to. I think corn is such a brilliant springtime bait that we've got to give it a go. And also with just a little bit of scum on the water, I think corn just sinks a little bit better. You can get it through that surface scum. Just had a fish mouthing the surface just past where we've put our bait in. So difficult though to get these fish that are cruising around, so difficult to force them down onto the bottom. There we go, first bite of the day. Little tiny dink on the float, and we've got one. Now what I don't want to do is rush this fish. I want to make sure he, he ends up in my net if possible. Did notice that there was an odd fish cruising around and maybe he's dipped down and got those pellets. It's a great start. So you can see there, just being patient. We didn't fall for the trap of refeeding. We didn't fall for that. We just were, were patient, took our time. Waited for a fish to find our bait rather than trying to attract fish. First fish of the day. If it's that fish that was sort of mouthing the surface just past our rig, I think he was a decent fish. He looked a big fish when he came up anyway. Sun's so bright, makes it so difficult to see see what's going on. You might notice I'm not going mad with the puller bung. Like I say, we're not trying to break any venue records today. We're just trying to maybe practice a method that might give us two or three extra fish at the end of a session. Hopefully in a match situation we've we've caught a load of fish across or down the middle maybe and we're just looking to catch two or three extra fish in the margins, just to nudge our weight over the line, hopefully win some money. What I'm very wary about is because we're sitting quite high up on the bank because I don't want this fish to go under my own platform, which they sometimes do when you're sitting quite high up. There, go. there he is, lovely common carp. Look at that, beautiful start to the session. What a fantastic fish. Hook perfectly, bang in the top lip, that's where we want to hook them. It wasn't coming off. Hold him up for you. Look at that for a cracking fish. As always, the camera never does these, these fish justice, especially when we've not got a mega wide lens on, but I'm saying he's probably about five pounds, something like that, four, four and a half, five pound. And that is a great start. We're not bothering with a keep net today. We just want to catch a few fish. No point keeping them in a net when we don't need to. Lower him down there. See you later, mate. Don't tell your friends that we're after them. As I say, I think that's a brilliant start. What I'm going to do is I'm going to refeed. I'm going to do exactly the same again. So we're just going to go with 40 pellets, five or six grains of corn, and we're just going to repeat the process. And then we're going to take it from there. And hopefully it's a repeat performance and we're attached to Another carp in no time.
<laughs> well, that didn't take very long, did it? The wind has literally just dropped a little bit. And it means that, whereas before I was sort of like struggling a little bit to see my float. It's made my float so easy to see. A little tiny dip, just as it was, the rig was settling and we've got fish number two on the end. Nowhere near as big as the first fish, but more than welcome. Obviously a, a little scrapper who was first first on the scene, no doubt, to that, to that feed. Look at that, nailed, absolutely nailed in the top lip. We're fishing no more than like an inch on the bottom. So that means that we're seeing every little indication we can we can almost tighten our float up and just move our float and tighten it up towards that sweet corn hook bait so we see every little indication. There we go, it's probably about two pound. I'd say that's one of the, the smallest carp that I can see cruising around. Another little common though, cracking condition. Every, every single fish in this lake seems to be in great condition. Like I say, just a case of repeating the process. You can see how efficient it is by feeding with this big pot instead of feeding with a little pot on the end of your pole. Now, it's not to say that in some, some situations I don't like feeding with a pot on the end of my pole, especially in really shallow water. I think it's brilliant. But for this situation where we're trying to, you know, we're not trying to go mad, we're just trying to make sure everything's right, everything that we're doing is, is bang on. Feeding with that larger pot is the way to go. So another grain of corn. I'm not using a, a big grain of corn on the hook. I'm trying to select one of the smaller grains and I'm almost giving it a little tiny squeeze before we hook it. So just softens it a little bit. I think that's a nice thing to do. I think it just makes it a little bit more attractive to the fish. Now all that bait would have been settled on the bottom and we can just simply lay our rig in. I think it's definitely worth talking about this lake in general and the contours of this lake because with the water level being down, it's gave me a really good chance to have a look round and, and look at what goes on under the surface. Now, I've spent a lot of time in drained lakes. I used to go to a, a fishery management college and I spent two or three years doing a, a fishery management course. So netting fish, being in drained lakes, moving fish around, that was my, that was my game while I was at college. But it always surprises me when I come to a lake and you see just what's beneath the surface because take this place for example, on the face of it, on a normal day when the water level's high, it just looks like a normal snake lake. But when you actually see what's beneath the surface, you can see that some pegs have got really steep shelves, some pegs have got roots in the water, there's reeds laying in the water, the roots that they've got in, going in the water, they provide some cover for fish as well. You can see why some pegs are better in the winter than others because it's deep up against the far bank. You can see why maybe some pegs are better in the summer because there's a nice shelf that you can fish on and present your rig perfectly. I mean, there's a peg further down today that I imagine when the water level's nice and high, there's a beautiful flat shelf on the far side for the fish to, to sit on and you, for you to feed your bait on and catch plenty of fish. So it just blows my mind. Every time I see these lakes with a low water level, how different it is under the surface. And you know, if you ever get a chance to go to a fishery and, and see it being drained down, it's well worth it because it just opens your eyes, just makes you understand what's going on under the surface maybe. Another big torpedo cruising through the swim there. There's a two of them cruising through. When I lay my rig in, if my float doesn't sit perfectly straight away, I like to put it into the water again and repeat the whole process. I want it to sit nice and low every single time. I don't want loads of bristle sticking out. And once it's in the swim, it's just a case of holding it as still as you can. 
right over the top of that feed. And then by reading your float, all those little movements on your float, you can tell when there's a fish in your peg quite often. And if I think that a fish has been in the peg for a long time and I've not hooked it, or even if I foul hooked a fish maybe, and not landing it, or even missed a bite, and I think all my bait has been scattered or ate, or ate, eaten, ate, eaten, whatever you'd like to say, that's when I'll refeed again, because I need to set that trap. I need to be fishing my hook bait over the top of a bit of feed. You know what, folks? I fancy a change. We've got the dead maggots on the side tray. We've had a couple of fish on corn, but I feel like there's not loads and loads of fish coming into the peg. I think dead maggots are probably gonna maybe attract a few more fish than, than the corn is. We're still gonna feed those pellets. I think they're a brilliant bait all year round, but I'm gonna feed a nice little blob of dead maggots. Fishing in exactly the same place. We're just going to see if dead maggots are the way to, way to go on this particular day because I reckon we've fed know, maybe 30 dead maggots, something like that. Again, we're not going overboard. I see, I see little point in feeding loads and loads of bait when we're only fishing for one fish at a time. We're only trying to attract one fish or two fish into the swim and hopefully we get one of those fish to make a mistake. Now these dead maggots are ridiculously soft, so I think we could probably put, if we put four on, that looks like a great hook bait to me. Four dead reds. How many carp up and down the country have fell for that over the years? Let's see if that makes a difference because don't get me wrong, corn's a great bait and it's attractive, but I do feel that sometimes you need fish milling around for a grain of corn to, to work. And these fish are definitely happier to sit in the upper layers and just cruise around, not really interested in feeding. But I think maybe the smell of some maggots might change that. I fished this lake once in the past, it was in the middle of winter and we had no problems whatsoever with silverfish, so we shouldn't get pulled around by a little perch or roach, fingers crossed anyway. And if we do get a bite, it should be a decent fish. Cool, he wanted that. Now we'll just add, we we'll put those maggots and pellets in. We had to wait a few, few minutes for a sign of any fish, but we've just had a load of like, scum come into the peg, really shining on the water, creating loads of problems, getting the float in. And uh, just lost sight of the float then for a second. <laughs> All of a sudden, this line's tightened up and the, the elastic just streamed out of the pole. Obviously me not concentrating fully, I guess. And we've got a fish on, and that's quite often the beauty with a, a nice soft bait like maggots, that they do tend to grab onto it a, a little bit better, and the bites tend to be far more positive. Obviously we've got loads of hook points showing as well. So, you don't tend to miss many bites with a nice, natural, juicy bait, like four dead reds, a nice big bunch of maggots. But we could see definitely more signs of fish in the swim as soon as we started feeding some, some of those maggots. There we go, another, every single fish has been a common carp. Another nice fish. Now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on fishing. I'm going to turn the cameras off because 
I think you guys have had enough, but I'm going to carry on fishing, see if we can catch a few more fish, hopefully some big boys. I think that's a great way to end the session. Nice little common carp, caught down the edge. Until next time, guys, tight lines. <laughs>